Barak. You may be seated, Yisrael. You may be seated, hallelujah. What a great privilege and honor that your grants unto a nation of people that's so far removed from him that he would accept the praise offerings that we and he has generated from our bosom to offer unto him. What a great privilege that he is, Yisraya, that he dwells in the midst of the offerings of Torah from among Yisraya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what a great blessing it is to enjoy the riches of our Abba. He grants unto us. He satisfies the bosom of Yisraya with the tough things of Torah. We began to understand. Our knowledge began to increase. And as our knowledge began to increase, we become more fortified. We have strength. And our desire is more solidified that we are in companionship with him. There is nothing that will draw us away. Nothing that would separate us as Shaul. I'm determined that nothing will separate me from the Ahad, the love of Almighty So there is no external factors, internal or spiritual factors, that can separate us from the Most High. We greet you all that have joined us on the live broadcast. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. May he strengthen Yisrael Yah. And as we see the showers of the rain, we do hope our tikva is that the rain come. We will not pray Yah, send the rain. We as Yisrael Yah, whatever he does, we do Yah for all things. We must always be a people in preparation and making ready for the season that is ahead. I was thinking as our Ach Simeon and Zachim Birmin, and the garden is more important in this season than anything because uh, that's where our substance of life in the natural sense comes from. And to see them as they have thoroughly manipulated and carried out the mandate of getting things ready that we may plant and that we may see the fruitfulness of Yah as he calls that to expand. But it is one thing, although we drip irrigate everything, there is nothing like a prolific rain. And the phosphates and the phosphorus, nitrogen that is drawn from the heavens that he sprinkles down. You will see the difference from one day to the other. So we will say, Yah, your will be done. You send us rain, we told uh, you for that. Because there are nations and people that they are getting torrid rain. And it pours down the monsoon for days and weeks. The homes are flooded. So I've learned over the many years, whatever your will, your, let it be so. I don't pray for the rain. I don't pray for the sun. If he send the sunshine, to the ya. If he send the coldness of the breeze of the air, I to the ya. Because the dryness upon the land, I still to the ya. That prepares us and calls us to prepare all things that we can make things ready. And so the Ach were making things ready. If the rain comes, we told the Yah, he has filled the reservoirs with water. So we will simply pump the water so that the gardens may be fruitful. And we will shall enjoy the blessings of that. Yes, sir, Yah. I'm glad to be in Yah's Bayat again, as the old ones would say. He grants me the opportunity to come. <clears throat> I tell you, to be totally honest, I certainly were, was not ready nor prepared in the sense. And said to my Zachin, Yaramiya, I knew that he would be somewhat tired and should have handed this off to Zachin Birmin or one of the other Ak. But I shall try in, in the effort of Yah to try to bring something of some delight to the bosom of Yisra'ya. Above all things, we must understand truth, Yisra'ya. We must, above all things. And it is one thing that, you know, the simplicity of deceits, it is of equal as the simplicity of truth. When Hoshua Tan said to Chava, he did not instruct her to do something that was extraordinary. 
simply defy the Most High. And once you defy Him, you have maturated to the level, matured, you have grown, you have increased, and you have abound to the level whereby you can withstand Him by your own concept of knowledge that you have developed by the things that surround you. And that's the nature of man today. We tend to develop according to our surrounding environment. And then we tend to think that that is the strength of power. And that is such deceit, Israel. And as she pondered what he said, as she considered and thought on it, she began in her own wiseness of her wisdom, she began to conjure and create images and imaginations that cause her to defy the Most High. So it is with us. And the Torah of Yah, it creates in our laba, our mind, in our hearts, the image in the sense, nothing that is a physical image, but it is the image of his hand. It is the image of his power. Then it begins to grow in us to make us stronger, stronger. And then once we began to grow stronger, we began to abound, abound. I want to teach from that concept tonight what it is to abound. I want to define the word shefa, shefa, that we as Yisraya, we must abound even the more. I want to define the excellence of this word according to its Hebraic, its Aramaic, Ugaritic definition. The word abounding. I want to do this in order to captivate our minds by the khatuv that I want to read and to explain tonight, Yisraya. This is what the word shefa or shefa is. Abounding to abound, abound. It is to be full, to be full. To be full to the overflowing. Now when there is something that is overflowing, then it is brimming over. There is not enough room in the vessel to contain it. To abound. We are abounding in the knowledge of Yah's Torah. It must be, and we must be full of the knowledge, His Imat, to the point whereby it is overflowing, and also to be highly productive, to become copious. You understand what copious is that we as a nation to become copious? It is to have ab resources, to have the riches of the Torah, to have the rich knowledge of the Torah, that there is nothing that opposes us, that has the power to seduce us and draw us unto the will of its nature or to become subject unto that. That we should live copiously uh, and that we are supplied with everything. Uh, and having that we have within our labor, within our minds, uh, we have all the resources uh, that we need when we abound uh, in the Torah of Yah. Well, there is only one people that abounds uh, in the Torah of Yah. And I want to identify that people who they are, what kind of a man, what kind of uh, an ish or an isha. And if there is a man that could give us direction, understanding, and wisdom of that matter, then certainly Shulomo, as he speaks with great utterance of the vast knowledge that Yah had poured into his vessel, and by his own desire to turn against that, uh, he realizes in the end that there is nothing greater than the great riches of Yah. He speaks to us here in the book of Mishuli, Proverbs, chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 20. He identifies the person, the characteristic, the personality, uh, Mishuli, Proverbs 20, 28. He tells us of a certain kind, and that is a faithful, uh, one that has the imuna, one that has the steadfastness, the strength. 
the assurance and the firmness of Torah established in them. A faithful man that even though through great trials and great opposition, there is a steadiness in our minds. We do not abrogate our responsibility or turn trying to find some other remedy or avenue of remedy. So he identifies a certain kind. A faithful man shall abound. He is the one that shall shafar, whereby it is copious, it overflows. A faithful man. And we know that we all can identify that we have been an unfaithful people. I can attest to that above all men, Yisra'iah. But it is certain that a man that is faithful, a man that has the power of Yas Imuna, a man that is stern and faithful, consistent in the wisdom of Yas Torah, a faithful man, obliged Yah, he walks in that council, he acknowledges that this is from Yah, and he attests by his lifestyle that it is from the heavens above, and he lives according to that mandate and that instruction so a faithful man he always abound he is one that shefa, he is one that uh, whereby the riches of Yah overflows out of his vessel his mind speaks of the excellence of Yah his mind his thoughts uh, are filled with the riches of Yah and it overflows Yisra'iah. He has the resources. We have more than enough. Was not, is not your sure the faithful man of Yah? Yeah. Did not the overflowing of that uh, cause it to flow upon us? Yeah. When one or something overflows, if your bathtub overflows, you walk in, your feet get wet, and as the water rises, uh, it overtakes you. So we must understand as a nation that as we walk and our faith, our imuna is developed. And the only way it is developed is by Shemach. We must hear Yisra'iah. There's one thing that the enemy has taught us not to hear. That we are all seeking our own the interpretations of the matters of Yah. And that cannot be so Yisra'iah. So it begins with us in our imuna, whether we're going to stand, whether we're going to be faithful, we're going to be stern, we're going to be consistent and persistent in the matter. And the only way we're going to abound, we must be faithful. We cannot be up today and down tomorrow. A faithful man, it says, he abounds with berachaya. He abounds with the blessings of Almighty Yah. He has the prosperity, he has the riches of the knowledge of Torah, and there is no lack in his life. He knows having food and raiment, he is much contented. It is not of the things that he perceives in the visual or his visual perception of matters that he is blessed. But that is not what Shaul or Shalomo is saying, because he had the great riches. And he knows, and he knew that a faithful man, uh, he abounds, shall, not might, a faithful ish, shall, shafah, shafah, he shall abound with the berakiah, but he that make uts, or he that presses the matter, he that strives to try to ascertain or to gain things, uh, or he that make haste to be rich, uh, shall not be nakha, he shall not be blameless. He shall not be blameless, those that make haste to be rich. Isn't that the doctrine of this most deceitful, masterating harlot today? Isn't that the deceit of this harlot? That it teaches everyone to make uts, to make haste. And when one makes haste, Yah is saying what Shalomo is saying, one will begin to defy the Torah of Yah.
when one is faithful, when one is consistent, when one has the imuna of Yah, when one walks uh, in the legitimacy uh, of what Yah commands, uh, when one relies upon Yah, when one uh, has confidence in what Yah says, uh, and when one has that and possess that, you see the steadfastness of their walk. You see the stability of that ish, that isha, and then because of that, they began to shefa, they began to abound. And once one begins to abound, you see the overflow and riches in their lives. You see the berakaya, the blessings of his rafa, the riches of his isha, that is simply that there is a praise unto Yah, the mouth exclaim and uh, it celebrates the riches of Yah, the riches of life, the riches of breath, the riches uh, of the promises of Yah, the riches of one's tigva. So we must be faithful in order to abound in the riches of Yah. And if we are not faithful, we are not going to abound. As one would say, up today and down tomorrow, no, when what is faithful, and consistent and persistent in what Yah, when one is persistent, they press beyond all opposition. They will not allow anything to deter them to alter what Yah commands because our minds are always trying to alter what Yah commands us to do. We're always trying to change that Yisraya. We must be gone with faithfulness. Because a faithful man will abound. He abounds. There is, uh, he is full of shefa to be full of, uh, to, over, to be full to the overflowing, uh, to be highly productive, to become copious. And that is one having abundantly. One having the riches of Yah. One having not just his needs supplied, but at his needs are supplied to beyond one's comprehension. Uh, and also having the resources. Having the resources for the battle. That's what we need, don't we? We need resources, Yisraya, because our resources are being used up quite quickly. And the only way we're going to maintain the substance of the resources uh, or the knowledge of Torah, we must be faithful uh, unto Yah. We have all learned how to be unfaithful. We have committed some of the most vilest of atrocities uh, against Yah. We have lied against him. We have spoken against him. We have defied him. Uh, we have been defiant uh, even unto Yah. And because of that, we have not learned how to abound. To have the overflowing power of Almighty Yah. And so we are up today and we are down this evening. Uh, we don't have the resources of his strength, but strength. We are not copious. We don't have the abundance of that. And when the smallest of matters confronts us, then we throw our hands up and we give up. I want to take us on a journey of the abounding of Yah, how we abound, how we get to that point. It is needed. We must understand. Well, that is a word of such simplicity, I know. And that's how the enemy twists our minds because we don't look at the smallness of the matters. And we must, Yisraya, hallelujah. I want to inject this in this process tonight. A profound utterance from Shirach, the wise counsel of wisdom from the book of Shirach. His wisdom speaks to us, Shirach 21, in verse 13. He says... The knowledge, the da'at, the ability to discern, to know what is of Yah, the knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood. It shall shefa. When a man is wise, when a man has the knowledge of Torah, everything he speaks, it is an overflow. You cannot stop a torrent flood or when the floodgate is open. And we are not of that nature, Yisraya. We can speak uh, quite highly of ourselves. Um, and we don't want to say, I'm weak, yeah, I have, do not have the ability. Yeah. But when a man is knowledgeable of the Torah, when a man has the discernment and the wisdom of Torah, when he is wise, then his wisdom abounds like a flood. That's what the Shefa is. It is an overflowing. So you can talk to talk all you want to. But there must be a chalak. 
We must walk the path. And we know we're in the path because our wisdom speaks, our knowledge of truth, it speaks. And when there are others in our presence, then it overflows unto them, Yisrael. The wise man, or the knowledge of a wise man, it shall abound like a flood. And his counsel, and the counsel of a wise man, it is like, uh, it is like a pure fountain of living water. When a wise man speaks, his counsel is like a pure stream of the living water. He speaks from the bosom of Almighty Yah. His, his, uh, his witness, his life witness to the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. And we must, the only way we're going to become faithful is that we must hear the wise counsel of the wise men. And if we don't hear the wise counsel of the wise men, we will not have Imuna because Imuna comes by hearing. There are ozen, our ozen, our ears are opened for one thing. The ozen, or the word ozen, simply, or it has the implication of this truth, is that we have the ability to discern the revelation, the revelation of Yah. There are ozen, it's open, Yisra'ya, and it's one thing that we have, by the nature of this vile harlot that we have all sat under, then our, our ears and our spiritual uh, antennas have been clogged with all kinds of putrefied puke. And we must be cleansed. We just must be washed. What is the washing like pure water? Well, uh, if you began, to, uh, you began to relish in the knowledge of a wise man, uh, the wise man shall abound, he shall, shift, uh, he shall overflow, he shall have the resources uh, from his substance to speak to us uh, like a flood. Uh, and his counsel is like the fountain of pure living water. So it has all the mineral traits that we need. It doesn't taste foul. It is sweet. No water like it. But it flows down in the belly. It revives the inward parts. It causes it to come alive. Not the dead water that we drink. And we think we're drinking living water. But it causes us to come alive. And we are alive, Yisra'ya. It causes, uh, it causes uh, the zira, the seed, to come alive. Uh, and from that seed, uh, it begins to produce the peri, the fruit, uh, and substance, uh, and the resources that we rely upon. Come on, that's why the, the God or the God Han is so important. Because we rely upon the resources, Yisra'ya. You are going to send the rain. We cannot cause it to increase. He sends the increase. Uh, and then we enjoy the substance of that. So it is with the wise man's counsel. Uh, in order for man to be faithful, uh, he must be a wise man. In order for you bath to be faithful, you must be become wise in the pure counsel of Yah. And if we don't become wise in the pure counsel of Yah, then there is nothing that abounds. There is no overflowing love toward Yah. There is no resource that we draw upon in the midst of a flood that we have the assurance that all shall be well. We need that. We need it, Israel. We must have the growth and the maturity to get to the place whereby when your sure comes, we will know that it's him. We will know now. I know we think we know, but we don't know. We will know, Israel. That is the wise counsel. To us that we must, as a nation, have the shift, ah, the abundance, the much that is needed for the hour that we're in. Here's a tremendous comforting that Shaul speaks in the book of Corinthians, yeah, 1 Corinthians 15. He speaks to us here in this nation and the nations of Yisra'ya scattered throughout the uttermost parts of the earth. And he spoke to them to let them know that their mitzvah, the works of their imuna, it was not in vain. And to give them great assurance. Look at how he directs his attention to them and what is the result of 
their obedience produce. First Corinthians, one verse here, chapter 15 and verse 58. He calls them his beloved. He said, therefore, first Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved Yisraelite, ach, the chot. He said, first of all, you must be your Yashach. I want you to be steadfast. And when one is steadfast, you must, as I was a child, when my mother, as I began to grow up, when she would reprimand me by whipping me, I would stiffen myself and say, it doesn't hurt. And that is what your shach is. It is to be stiffened, to be steadfast. It is to harden yourself with great resolve. So he tells us to stiffen ourselves. He said, I want you to have a hardened resolve. Therefore, my beloved, he says, I want you to be steadfast. He commands us to be unmovable. And then he uses this expression, not sometimes, but always abounding. Always abounding. Always shifa. Always growing. Always overflowing. Always having the imuna of Yah, and that is the imuna of Yah is one expression that is the full assurance of one's mind. We must have the full assurance. We cannot have partial assurance, and that's what the result of imuna is. It is the full assurance of one's mind. It is the full assurance of the mitzvah of Yah and Yeshua, and it is also charis. A profound connotation, listen, that that mind is exempt from doubting Yah. Well, our minds, I began here, my mind is not exempt from that. There is a mind that is exempt from doubting Yah. We must be exempt from that. We must be exempt. That is the imuna, the shifa, abounding. A man, he said, unmovable, always. Not sometimes, always shifa, always abounding. That the resources, even as they flow out of you and overflow, there is still abundance of the riches of the imuna of Yah. Dwelling in your bosom richly overflowing, Yisraeliah, because your testimony is sure, is steadfast. You don't move, you don't turn, you don't give up, you don't easily turn away, Yisraeliah. Not at all, we have the shifa, we have the abundance, we have much, we have more than enough. He said always abounding, not sometimes, always abounding, always abounding. Always. And the only way we're going to abound is that a faithful mind. We must be faithful, imuna, that our minds are exempt from doubting Almighty Yah. That we have the full assurance of what He speaks unto us, Yisraya. Hallelujah. Unmovable, always abounding. Where? In the mitzvah, in the works, in the commands, in the instructions. Uh, and the assignment of Master Almighty Yahweh. We must always abound. That's how we're going to abound. Always abounding there. Always abounding there. Always shifar, abounding, overflowing. The works, they're pleasurable to our heart because it is the strength that feeds our imuna. A man has imuna without works. He has nothing. You cannot have imuna without works, nor works without imuna. And we must always abound in the mitzvah, the works, according uh, to Yah's true instructions, uh, that the riches may overflow. We need that above all people. We need that, Yisrael. In this hour, listen. He says, for as much, Yisrael, as you know that your, na- your labor is not in vain, where? In Yahshua. We can do all things through Yahshua HaMashiach. It gives us strength. We know that our labor is not sharp. It is not empty of substance. 
we may perceive that in, in this natural mind that there's a law in our natural mind that is enmity. Uh, it fights against Yah. There is an Oye that is a mind of an enemy. But we must always abounding in the mitzvah. We must always. I don't care what the situation seems like, what the circumstance is. You must abound. You must allow the works of Torah to be overflowing in you. And you know that there's an overflow of that because you are faithful unto Yah. And it is His counsel that has made you wise. And because that counsel has made you wise, then there's a flood of the overflowing of the living water, the high yield, the water of life and strength that bears uh, the substance of your strength that flows uh, in your inward parts uh, and you drink the pure water constantly and continuously uh, in the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must abound. We must abound. We have to abound. We have to get to that place, Yisrael. We must understand the instructions uh, how to get there hallelujah the assurance the shahu speaks to us even in the tremendous agony of afflictions that we must endure yisraya hallelujah he speaks that to us to let us know one thing i want to point this out to you in second corinthians 1 3 hallelujah second corinthians second corinthians 1 3 quickly he says Bless Barak, the name of the power of Yah. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. He says, Bless be Yah. Even the Abba of your sure Ahamashiah, he is the Abba of Naham and Hasid, of great mercies, a tender, kind love, and Abba of all Naham. He is the father of all comfort. He is our father of comfort, Yisra'ya. He says, uh, who comforts us in not some, but call all our, uh, our tribulation. When the foe come against us, uh, when there is adversity, when the enemy, when our minds are oppressed, uh, when we are being oppressed, uh, he comforts us in all. We must understand this for the trial that is ahead. Uh, he comforts us in all of our tribulation. Uh, that we may be able. Uh, that you are able. Uh, to comfort them. Uh, which are in any trouble. Uh, by the comfort wherewith. We ourselves. Uh, are comforted. Of almighty God. So we as a nation. Among Israel, among the strangers, uh, the gear among us, we must be able to comfort. And many times it's not our words that speak comfort to individuals. Uh, it is almost like a mother, she's afflicted, uh, the ima, and she watches her little child, the actions, the attitude, uh, and that is such a great comfort to the ima. It is not always an expression that is verbal. Uh, it is the action. It is the deeds. Hallelujah. We were out the other day and I said to my Isha, I said, uh, she said something uh, and uh, I said to her, I responded, uh, I didn't like how she answered uh, and immediately she says, Reach, I'm sorry. Well, how do you respond to that? But your heart simply melts away. It is a comfort. It is a, an assurance of one's bosom. You understand, Yisra'ya? And that is what Yah does to his nation, his people. He comforts us that we may comfort those by the same comforting that he has comforted us. But here is the catalyst. Listen, this is the catalyst here in verse 5. For as the suffering of Yahshua HaMashiach, he says, abound, abound. It is an overflowing, isn't it? That's what Shefa is. Do you want me to define it again, Shefa? To be full, to overflowing, to be highly productive, to become copious, uh, supplied, or richly supplied. So the suffering of Yahshua abounding in us cause us to be richly supplied with the resources of Yah. It doesn't make sense. 
to the natural proclivity and the thinking of one's own intellectual ability to dissect and to deduct from this. But this is what Yah says. His ways are not our ways. As high is the heavens above the earth, so, so are the ways of Yah, so are the thoughts of Yah, than the ways of, of man. But he says to us, Sha'u utters, for as the suffering of your sure Hamashiach abounds in us. It abounds. It abounds, Yisra'ya. And until we come to that to know that it abounds in us, Yisra'ya. And it is a certainty that it is in us. I began to explore the word imuna, faith. And then I began to look at some of the different action or aspects of that. We have to take time and to be deliberate. Yes, Raya. You're not going to get this by just reading. You have to dig deep. You understand? And as I began to look at what Shaul says here, I want to read it and induct or inject the Hebraic expression here. He says, far as much as the suffering of Yeshua abounds, but he uses Imona, Imona, or the faith, we have confidence in that. But this is what Imona in this instant, in this place, what it injects through to our thought process. It is, uh, for we know that the suffering of Yeshua Hamashiach abounds. Uh, it is to be exempt from failure. We're exempt from that. We're not going to fall. I know that the Sadiq man, he falls on the fall. He falls prostrate. And the wicked comes in his stead, or he comes. I know that a Sadiq man, he nafals. And nafal is not he's falling into sin. That he falls prostrate. He falls under the weight of the oppression and the opposition. That, but he is exempt from failure. Now, that's all right by me. Also, it implies as the certain of an event... And that is an event that takes place in our bosom. Uh, that we are bound in the suffering of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. We began to see things clearly or and clearer. It causes our imuna to grow with leaps and bounds. Yes, right, yeah, where we, we began to have confidence in Yah. There's a precious ark that he, he's a precious man. I, I, I like talking to him. His name is Ak Davis there. In California, he is the only person I've met from California, Cali, that you know that there's a sincere beauty in this man. And he says to me today, he says, Riyak, you make it so simple that it has revolutionized my life. And I began to talk of this man, how that even, how Yah, as I spoke his testimony, how that, how the power of Yah has transformed. He says to me, he said, I used to wear the Rolex watches and the diamond rings and the expensive shoes and all of the things we call finery. And as I began to listen to you, everything has been parted down. The Rolex is gone, the diamonds. And all of those things that I perceived was the batter of my strength in Yah. I found them to be a hindrance uh, and caused me to like. He said, I like the simplicity. Above all things, I want to be known to bring the simple truth uh, to light unto Yisrael. I'm, I'm not looking for some kind of demonstrative type of, uh, 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 of expression of Torah. I want it to be simple. That, isn't that beautiful there? For we know for the suffering of Yahshua by Imuna or about Imuna that Yah says because of the suffering uh, you are exempt from the failure. It abounds. Imuna but you are exempt from failure. And not only that uh, it is a certain of an event that shall transpire in you uh, because it abounds there. We are certain that we shall uh, and that suffering shall abound in us, Yisra'ya. For we know that the suffering of Yahshua abound in us. He says, so our consolation also. Again here now, he uses the word abounds. Also our consolation 
emona or bounds, uh, but here it implies uh, that uh, there is fidelity from Yah. He knows what we're going through. It means uh, loyalty, and then it also implies here uh, there is a firm adherence to the allegiance uh, and duty. Yah's allegiance with us and his duty to Yisrael, that suffering in your sure that abounds in us. Uh, there's a duty that Yah has. There's an allegiance with us, Yisrael. That's what the enemy has uh, hoodwinked us. Uh, and we don't think that every word of Yah is important. We need men to labor. And sometimes it's difficult, Yisrael. I said to Zakin, you remember Yah last night? I know he was tired because yesterday I was tired. We pulled that wire all the way down to the ravine, my friend. My arm was wore out from driving. No staples. When I went out, I went to purchase the two-inch one. So that gives you a little more driving to do. It was hot. It was laborious. I was sweaty. The Jean Valjean said I was tired and hungry. It was hard work. Laborious. What did you say? What did you say? I was wore out. In a labor like that, you don't feel like picking up the book. You want to kick up your heels after that. Rest. So I said to my friend, Ma'ach, Yusuf, we had our friend Shimri today, and he's speaking all these accolades to him. He is a Samsonite. I say he's nothing. He hasn't proven himself with us. He has a life, but man, but, 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 but he still does now. I said he's a newbie. He has not labored here to do this. He must prove himself. We will find out at the end of the course the day whether he can and you attest with these superlatives uh, that he's this man of man. He sees not. We till the labor is finished. And of course, as Yosef began to watch and say, no, you messed that up. You didn't do that right. I said, what did I tell you? He has not earned that title. He has not earned that regard. And then at the end of the day, he, we could not have done it in the time today without him. We cannot do it without the sufferings abounding in us. We cannot, Yisraya. For we know that the suffering of Yoshua, Imuna, we exempt from failure. Without that, we're going to fail. It is a certain of a faithful man these events will uh, transpire among him, among the Ishaw. And as this abounds in us, Yisraya, we know also uh, our consolation abounds here in verse 5. Uh, there is a fidelity, a loyalty, uh, a firm adherence uh, to the allegiance and the duty. Yah wants us to know by that suffering abounding, uh, he is firm in his, uh, his allegiance to us in the responsibility uh, that he has unto Yisrael. So that's why it must abound in us. And so as we shall come to the end of this time for our consolation, uh, as we came to the end of the labor today, Yosef said uh, he did well. I, I can't argue against that. We could not have gotten it done without him today. It would not have been done. Was there consolation? Certainly it was for me. I was happy as a rabbit in a, in a field of lettuce. I said, wow, that's, I said, you sin, safe and I would have gotten it done. But not this fast. We've still been here. Hallelujah. And so although there are things in our lives, we cannot get to that place unless the, the sufferings by Imuna, they're bound. And it is to show the firm commitment of Yah 
that we are exempt, that there is no failure. And these events, uh, they have come to pass because uh, of Yah's allegiance and his duty unto us uh, to make his hand known to Yisra'ah and his strength, Yisra'ah. He is faithful. And when we walk in our faithfulness, then we are going to abound. There should be a shifa and overflowing of confidence in Yah. Because the constellations come by also the afflictions or the suffering that we endure Yisra'ya. One thing we must learn just in all things, just give total. Don't complain. Just give total unto Yah. Hallelujah. He goes on to say here in verse 6. And whether we are, whether we be or not, we be oppressed or afflicted or humble, it is your consolation and your Yahshua, your salvation, which is effectual, which you tell me that is effectual in the endurance of the same suffering, which we also suffer. So what shall all say, what I'm enduring, you know that you're going to endure the same thing, but it is the effectualness of what I have done and what you are doing, that we have the assurance of God and Yahshua. So the same suffering of Yahshua, it endures in me. So shall it endure in us as well, Yisra'ah. Or whether we are comforted, it is for your consolation and your salvation. And our tegva for you is steadfast. It is steadfast. He said to them, be ye steadfast and unmovable. He said, but our tegva for you is steadfast, knowing as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you also be of the consolation. So as the sufferings abound, so shall the constellations, Yisra'ya, the Nohan, the comforting of Yah. And the Nohan, it is only Yah's tender love, kindness toward Yisra'ya. That word express nothing but Yah's love, kindness, and his tender love toward his nation and his people. We must begin to abound. We must have the overflowing power, the overflowing desire, even in the midst of all of, of, of the oppression and the opposition that comes our way, Yisra'ya. We must have that. Hallelujah. He goes on to speak in the 8th chapter, the 7th verse in 2nd Corinthians. Yeah. Hallelujah. He gives us the recipe of how we abound. How we shifa, how we cause this full of this overflowing, uh, that we are highly productive, that our lives are copious, richly supplied uh, with the resources that we need to overcome. Here uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, in chapter 8, verse 7, he says, Therefore, therefore, Yisraeli, as you abound, abound, do you hear that word? About now. He is still talking about Imuna here. And I want to show you and make clarity as to what he speaks. He is saying, therefore, as you about Imuna, he says here that uh, you must be consistent. And we are consistent in our affection with Yah. I will show you because as we read, we will see. He says unto us, therefore, as you about Imona, consistent in affection and faithfulness, or it is as the faithfulness of a husband or a wife. But as you abound, see, as we are consistent, as we are faithful, as we are consistent in all things, as you, he says, in everything, in Imona, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, diligence, and in your ahava to us, seeing, seeing that you abound in this free, unmerited ahava and favor also, is, is that we abound in what we have not earned. It's because that there is an allegiance with the Abba, with his nation of people, and we have, uh, because of his 
consistency, and because of his faithfulness, then we can abound in this great Ahava of Yah through Yahshua Hamashi. It should be overflowing. I know it's a simple word, but it has grave ramification for us. And that is what the enemy does. He wants us to overlook those little things like that. He does. And so we must understand that uh, the value of what Yah speaks is of uh, great importance. We cannot overlook what he says. So we must abound in this unmerited, unearned favor and the love of Yah in Yahshua Hamashiach. It is for Yisra'ya. We have this shifa, this overflowing resource of Yah through Imuna, and it overflows and overtakes us. That's why there's such a great battle that we consistently, continuously engage in, always, because the sufferings abound in us. And so do also the comfort of Yah abounds as well, Yisra Hallelujah. You're just not suffering and suffering alone, but there's great comfort and consolation abounds too. Hallelujah. So for every affliction, there's consolation. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A word of reassurance here in the book of Felicia, uh, the book of uh, uh, Philippians. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 1. Jau speaks so clearly here that we must have this power of this great Ahava, and the only way we're going to understand this, it, ab it abounds by the knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach. He says unto the elect here in Philippians 1, eight, For Yah is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the afflictions of Yahshua HaMashiach. He knew that that same affliction that abounds in him abounded in the gathering, the elect there, at uh, 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 the gathering of, of, of the Philippians, uh, Felicia. Verse 9. As this I pray that your hava, your love now. See, although we are afflicted, he addresses them for this is the record. How greatly I long, I desire to be with you in all the affliction of Yahshua HaMashiach. He goes on to say in verse 9. And this I, pala, I intercede for you. That your Ahava, your love... Uh, May Shefa may abundantly abound, overflow your love, Yisraya. It may abound, may abound, yet more and more. What love? Your love for more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment of Yah, in all discernment. That's where we must abound in, that I love to understand the mishpatim of Yah and the power of his da'at, that we can discern not only the time, but we did discern the things that are in us, Yisrael. That must abound. We must have that abounding, that abundance of that, that it overflows in us as a nation of people. Because that is one of the most weightier things of Yah. Judgment and justice. And not that we should omit those things that are, we perceive are lesser. But those are the weightier things of Yah. We must have this love abounding in us. Can I read that again? And this I pray that your Ahava may abound. Yet more and more. See, more and more in what? In knowledge, da'at, and in all judgment. For all the discernment. Our knowledge and judgment, it must abound, Yisrael. We must have that. We must have an overflow of knowledge and to understand the reason of all things that Yah has permitted to be so. And once we understand that there's great consolation, there's great consolation, Yisrael. There's great comforting. Because you know that there is an allegiance and an alliance with you that the Heavenly Father and then he must be faithful to his duty and his call. The enemy has hurt with us in many facets of life. I know I have been still am on Yisrael. Yah must anoint our eyes with eyes salve that we must see. Our eyes need anointing. Hallelujah. He says in verse 11, in verse 10, he says... 
that you may approve or choose the things uh, that are excellent. See, when our knowledge abounds the more and more, we choose the things that are excellent and right before Yah, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of your sure Hamashiach. Unless we are bounding, unless our love abound the more and more in the judgment and the knowledge of Yah, then we're not going to be faithful until the day of your sure Hamashiach. That you may approve or choose the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of your sure Hamashiach. We are bounded in the love of Yah. We, we are exempt from failure. That's what he's saying. The words, uh, you, when you read and understand the expression, uh, you will know that the meaning uh, is applicable here. We're exempt from failure. And that's just a fact. We're exempt from that. Hallelujah. The emunah of you are just more than just believing and having something to believe for. It's, more, it's greater than that. That's why we need labors. That's why you are said to leave a, uh, don't worry about land or houses. You study this book. You got eight hours of labor. You don't have to worry about gardening uh, and farming uh, for the tithes and the gifts of the tribes and the other 11 tribes shall be your riches. Uh, your home shall be taken care of and all of that. You tend to the book. You got eight hours to tend to the book. You got eight hours with your wives and your children and you got eight hours of sleep. That's what he commanded there. Hallelujah. I can spend eight hours a day studying. I really could. There are many things I want to understand and to write and to make known unto us. But I have to work, Yisraya. Hallelujah. And then he says in verse 11, being filled with the fruit of Sadiq, which are by Yoshua HaMashiach, to the honor and praises of Yah. As we are bound in the love of Yah and the love of to have, to understand the judgment and the knowledge of Yah more and more, then we are filled, then our fruit grows, Yisra'ya. It grows. We must consistently water from the pure well. You've got to consistently water the garden. You don't, nothing is going to grow. I was saying to our, uh, Shimri today, I said, what a great blessing when we first moved here. If it's anything that Yah has ever caused my heart, and I had no knowledge of it, and that is to irrigate what you grow. You must irrigate. And that is what the love of, to abound in the love of knowledge and judgment, it irrigates Israel. It caused the, the little dripping to consistently come and cause the fruit of Sadiq to multiply. And then we have the ability to wait and to be exempt from failure before Almighty Yah. That is the truth. It's not going to come by some epiphany. It's going to come by obedience uh, until what Yah commands us to do. Colossia, Colossia. Quickly, chapter 2, verse 5. Hallelujah. This same expression is applicable to us today. The same word expressed the same uh, uh, reverence of great love uh, and the joy that which Yah also in them... Uh, he see the same thing in us. Colossians 2, 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the Ruach, having joy and beholding your orderliness, the order that you walk in, uh, and your steadfastness or the firmness uh, of your imuna in your Shu HaMashiach. He says this. As you have therefore received your Shu HaMashiach, the master, so walk in him. The knowledge you have of him, walk in that knowledge. And he expressed to us, as we receive that knowledge, become rooted and built up in him, established in Imuna, as you have been taught. Now, once you get to that process, he tells us, abounding uh, therewith with what? Yada, a thanksgiving of praises. Abounding there, overflowing there. Once you get to that point, you must abound now. Then I become saying, you must abound. You must overflow with yada, not just toda, but yada. A praise unto Yah with great thanksgivings for all He has done. Isn't this simple, Yisrael? I like it like this on Khatfi Met because it's simple and easy. 
Shabbat is a different ball game, all right? Can we matter like this? Hallelujah. Shabbat, we're a different ball game then. When the final seconds now, we're in the throes of the final millions of a second. And we just got one last shot. You cannot miss. Not at all. But this is the strength to take us to that so we don't miss the shot. Can I read that again? Wrote it and built up in him that we establish in faith, Emona, as you have been taught. So you become established in the Emona as we're taught of Yah. Abounding. Abounding. Abounding here is Zobiach. So be uh, abounding. Not only it is is the overflowing, uh, but it is simply this: to be satisfied with. You're satisfied. They're not, there's nothing like being satisfied. You're satisfied with abounding. Yeah, my, I'm satisfied. To be satisfied. So so be uh, to be satisfied with. Abound. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. To be satisfied with Yisra'ya. You know, abounding. Therein, satisfied that there is Todaya. I brought you with Yada. It is a simple truth. It is an easy way. It is not hard. It's hard to transgress the Torah. It is not difficult. Ways of a transgressor, one that defies the Torah is always hard. Yes, Hallelujah. We need to get to that point where we can abound in Yah, don't we? I will show you a simple way right here. Shaul writes unto Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians. Hallelujah. This is how we must abound. And there is an instruction that we must receive in order to abound. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 1, the utterance of Shaul. For, furthermore, he said, we beseech, we beg you. He is talking to the Yisraelite, the house of Yisraya, the Hebrews. Yisraelite, ah. He said, and we exhort you by the master, Yoshua. Listen, that as you have received, you have embraced. You have accepted, received us, us, how you ought, how you ought to walk and to please Yah. You must receive how you ought to walk and please Yah. For what reason? So you would abound. So you can abound. You must be taught how to walk. Teach me how to walk right. Teach me how to walk. Teach me how to talk. Come on, we must be taught. So when we are taught how to walk right, talk right and act right, then there's only one result, as Shaul says, for what reason? So you would, so you can abound. Abound. What is that? It is the yatta. Can I explain that to you? The Yatta, yes, I searched the book. And I must look at comparative verses uh, in the Renewed Covenant uh, or the Brit Hadassah as in uh, the Old Covenant. And from there I can cipher from the words in the same context uh, by understanding the definitive of the word. This is what the Yatta is. He said that you would abound. Can I explain what it is? Uh, having more than enough having an excess and not only that but you are preserved no the wicked Jezebel didn't teach us how to dig like that this comes in the wee hours of the night when you up when there is nothing to do but to look you understand but the yata Yisraya I will read it again it will make sense he says, so that you have received us as how you ought to walk and how to please Yah, so you would, Yata, have more than enough. He said that you would abound more and more. 
in order for you to move beyond that, uh, then you have to, you must have more than you need. He said, about more and more. Did he say that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, having abound more and more. That we as the nation of Yah, that we may proceed and progress as we learn how to walk and to talk before Almighty Yah. And if we don't do that, we're not going to, we're not going to progress. I want to close with two readings here in the book of Kepha, Second Peter. And this somewhat gives us an illustration as to what we must do in order to abound in Almighty Yah or to abound in Yoshua HaMashiach. Second Peter 1.1. 1, 1. He identifies himself as Shimeon Kepha, a servant. Not only is he an abbot, a faithful one, but a Sholish, uh, an apostle of Yoshua HaMashiach. And he speaks to them that have obtained like precious Imona with us through the Sadiq of Yah and our Yoshua, our salvation, Yoshua HaMashiach. He goes on to express that the unmerited, free unmerited love and favor and shalom be multiplied to you through the knowledge of Yah and of Yoshua, our Mashiach. He says, according to his Ozen, the revelation, as you receive this revelation, according to the revelation power, has given to us all things that pertain to life and being high. By these, verse 4, are given to us exceeding and great precious promise. The knowledge of Yah and Yahshua by this, about these are given to us an exceeding and great and precious promises. Uh, that by these we might be partakers of the revealed nature having escaped the corruption that is in this world through loss. Verse 5. Listen. He says, and beside all of this we have learned, he said, given all diligence, all will, all desire, Second Kephah 1, 5, given all the diligence to add to your imuna or the virtue or the power, you add virtue, and the purity of that knowledge. And to knowledge you add temperance, a balance in Yah and Yahshua. To temperance, uh, this desire to endure without complaining, patience. And to patience, uh, you add life or being full of the Chayil of Yah. And, uh, and this life, you add brotherly kindness. Uh, and to brotherly kindness, Ahava. Listen, for if this, these simple things, if these things be in you, and abound. They must abound. They must be overflowing. See that we are exempt from failure. If these things be in you and abound, they shall cause you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. Yeah. Abounding in the work of your Ibu, not exempt from failure, we will not fail. It will cause you. This is not a difficult process. And if these things abound in you, they shall cause you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our master, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah. See, these works are what produce the mighty power in this abounding of great strength and the overflowing of the wisdom of Yah and the mitzvah of Yah in us. It's a simple process. And that's all it takes, Yisrael. But all natural mind draws away from the very simple things and cause us to believe that it's going to take this or that. It takes this. If this abounds in us, if it abounds, if there is a shafa, if there is an overflowing of this in us, uh, it will cause us not to be barren, that the life or the testimony of Yahshua will not be in us, uh, neither will we be unfruitful. But the sadiq. Uh, a peri of Yah, the fruit of Yah, according to his righteousness, uh, shall flow and overflow, Yisra Yah. But we must follow the simple process, how to walk, how to talk, how to live. We must be taught that. We are children. And we must be taught, Yisra Yah. I close with the word of assurance to the bosom of Yisra Yah. You that have joined us, I close from the book of Romeo. Hallelujah. The book of Romans. 
chapter 15 and one verse to give us some kind of wisdom of what we must do and how we must accomplish the process that we may begin to abound in Yah. Rome Yah, Romans 15, 13. Shaul says, Now Yah of Tegva, of hope, of promises, of faithfulness, that he fills you with all joy and shalom in believing or oh, oh, mean, or oh, mean to be faithful, to support, to confirm what Yah has said. That is what all oh, mean is. I, I confirm it in me. I'm faithful to that. Now Yah of Tigva fear you with all Shimcha or joy and shalom in believing that you, that you, that you may abound in your tikva, in the promises of Yah, through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. That you may abound, Yisra'ya. That you may abound in your tikva. We must abound in the tikva of Yah. And the only way is through the Ruach HaKodesh. Not by some false spirit, but by the Ruach Ha Kodash. We must learn the ways, walk in the ways and the promises of Yah to abound, to Shafa, to have an overflowing of his power, the riches, the resources for the latter and the Akari that we're in. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. You pray that the simple truth was a delight and it strengthened your bosom. I hope so, Yisraya, my desire is that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As I said that. I knew that Zakain was tired. I was tired, but I knew that he had labored harder than me. And, and I knew that he was ready. He said, I'm ready, but whatever way you want to go, I said, okay. I'll go this way tonight, but definitely he will have to be ready next week. Him or Zakain, but I mean, one of you. Hallelujah. So may the riches of your rest upon you. All you that have joined us, the riches of your strength in your bosom. Just a simple truth. Uh, hallelujah. I like it simple like this. Uh, Hallelujah. I like simple things. I don't have a technocratic mind. I don't like things to be technical. I like simple things. I like looking at things from the simplest of way. Don't tell me you have to do it that way, Matt. No, no, no. Let's do it like that. We get it done. As the old folks would say, it's more than one way to skin a cat. I don't know. You, you skin in a cat, you just got to skin the cat. You skin a goat, you got to skin it. But there's more than one way. That cat to put a little slither on that leg and put some air in there and all that skin just whoop, it comes right on. Sure. They blow air in there and, and they just peel it off. Zakain better mean he cuts around the, the shank and he cuts that skin, he cut that and he got. I know that last cow that Oximion and I butchered and skinning that bad boy. I would have loved to have had some air in that and that. That was a laborious task. It was. That's not easy work. Then every fly that you can find comes to visit. Sure they do. In the eye, in the nostril, in the ear. Ah, yeah. Hallelujah. So let us be strengthened. Let us abound. Let us shafe. In the word of Yah. And let, let us allow that to strengthen our bosom. You that have joined us, we greet you. We hope that Yah has strengthened your bosom and caused the riches, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the delight of His Torah to fill your heart. Hallelujah. What else is it to live for, Yisrael? There's nothing else. And as sure as we live, um, the fact we're all going to die. You can pray, Yah, don't take me all you want. He's going to take you. You're going to die. That's a fact. So I want the labor, his mitzvah, my works, the mitzvah, speak for me, Yisrael. Let us be encouraged, and as the old ones would say, hold fast. Let us hold fast to the simple truth, and Yah shall revive us in your sure's name. Let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. On time. Hallelujah.
We will turn toward Yerushalayim as long as we are in Shabuth. Let us turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things we do, Barach you are Rabbah. Yoshua's name, we ask that you watch over us all, guide us. Bless all Yisraeli, those that join us, strengthen them all in Yoshua's name. And grant unto us your wisdom that we may abound in Yoshua is our prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Ya Barach, Amen.